This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. The Supreme Court has delivered a resounding victory for privacy rights in the age of smartphones. On Wednesday, the court ruled unanimously that police must obtain a warrant before searching the cell phones of people they arrest. The ruling likely applies to other electronic devices like laptop computers, uh, which, like cell phones, can store vast troves of information about a person's life. Uh, the decision involves two cases, including that of a California man, David Riley, who was sentenced to 15 years to life in prison after police pulled him over for expired vehicle tags, found guns in his car, and then searched his phone, discovering data used to tie him to a shooting. Wednesday's court ruling makes no mention of the National Security Agency and its vast web of cell phone spying. But some NSA critics say it signals a greater understanding by the Supreme Court of today's technology and its implications for privacy. Chief Justice John Roberts delivered the opinion of the court. On the final page, he wrote, modern cell phones are not just another technological convenience. With all they contain and all they may reveal, they hold for many Americans the privacies of life. The fact that technology now allows an individual to carry such information in his hand does not make the information any less worthy of the protection for which the founders fought. Our answer to the question of what police must do before searching a cell phone seized incident to an arrest is accordingly simple. Get a warrant. Well, to talk more about the ruling, we're joined by Nathan Fried Wessler, a staff attorney with the ACLU's Speech, Privacy and Technology Project. Nate, welcome to Democracy Now! Talk Thank about you. the significance of this unanimous 9 to 0 ruling. That's right. It's, it's really amazing. It's an unequivocal affirmation that the Fourth Amendment still has vitality in our digital age. You know, the, the court held that when police arrest a person uh, and search their cell phone or seize their cell phone, they need to go to a judge get a warrant based on probable cause before they can search the contents of that phone. And that's important because, as the court described, our phones contain staggering quantities of personal and private information about us. Uh, our phones contain things like years of our emails, our text messages, photos, financial records, uh, medical information, information about our intimate relationships. Uh, and police no longer are able to go on fishing expeditions through those records without getting a warrant first. Uh, the court understood and recognized that Digital searches in the 21st century require 21st century rules. Well, Nate, I want to go back because it really was an amazing decision and strongly worded. Uh, Ch uh, Chief Justice Roberts, writing the the opinion for the 9-0 uh, vote, said a cell phone search would typically expose to the government far more than the most exhaustive search of a house. A phone not only contains in digital form many sensitive records previously found in the home, it also contains a broad array of private information never found in a home in any form unless the phone is. Uh, so your uh, your sense of the the fact that both the conservative and the liberal wings of the court on this were unanimous? Yeah, it, it's really amazing, and it reflects a complete consensus that the aggregation of our sensitive digital data requires more robust protections from the court uh, because it poses more acute privacy problems under the Fourth Amendment. I mean, as the court recognized. You know, years ago in the analog world, we never would have had the kind of staggering quantities of personal communications in our houses that we now have in our email saved on our phones or on our other digital devices, for that matter. Uh, and the court's uh, opinion, you know, applies directly to searches of cell phones, but clearly the logic extends equally to other kinds of computers, uh, tablets, desktops, laptops. And it also starts to provide a roadmap for courts to look to when they're addressing other kinds of electronic searches, whether it's cell phone tracking or laptop searches at the border or other kinds. And, and what about the whole issue of uh, the uh, NSA uh, uh, spying, uh, the implications of, of this decision in terms of cases that may come up before the court on that as well? Yeah, I mean, the, the court was careful not to directly address that question, uh, but the logic the court employed and the, its reasoning, I think, uh, provide strong indication that courts around the country can look more carefully at those issues. Whenever the government is trying to troll through large quantities of our private digital information and learn the most intimate details of our lives, the Fourth Amendment has something to say about it now. And I, I look forward to courts really grappling with this issue, using this as guidance. Can you talk about the two cases on which it was based? 
Yeah, so the the cases came out of California and Massachusetts. Uh, one involved uh, the California case involved a smartphone. Uh, the Massachusetts case involved uh, a more traditional older flip phone. Uh, and police in both cases uh, took the phones after arresting somebody, searched through them without a warrant, uh, and the court held that the evidence uh, that comes from those searches cannot be admitted against people at trial uh, because those are unconstitutional searches. Uh, and it really it shows how sensitive that information is, uh, and it really is going to have a practical impact on police-citizen interactions, uh, police and, and interactions with people all over the country. What can people practically do? Whether they're at the airport, on a border, uh, on the street, uh, when uh, the police or customs agents takes their digital equipment? Well, the first thing is people now, uh, they know that they do not need to consent to these searches. Uh, you know, calmly tell the officer, I do not consent to this search. Uh, and then if the officer insists on continuing to, to search the phone, uh, then, you know, a, a reasonable affirmation of your rights, a, a statement that the Supreme Court has said that you need a warrant would be appropriate. Uh, and then uh, it'll be up for the courts to, to sort it out after the fact. But as of now, police are on notice that there is a firm rule they need to get a warrant.